Hello and welcome to End Goals, an LCMS Youth Ministry Podcast. I'm host Reverend Mark Kiesling and I'm with DCE Juliana Schultz. We are here to bring parents, church workers, and lay leaders discussions and resources to help your youth ministry meet its end goal, which is young people who are disciples of Jesus Christ for life. Today, we are interviewing speaker and author Heather Roosh, an author of a resource on youthesource.com. Youth eSource is LCMS Youth Ministries' resource website with over 1,700 different articles, Bible studies, skits, and discussion guides. There's a wealth of doctrinally reviewed, current, and helpful resources for your youth ministry. To find out more, go to youthesource.com and check it out. In the months since the 2019 LCMS Youth Gathering, we have been posting Bible study resources written by gathering speakers or studies that revisited the themes of the gathering. Today in studio is one of the speakers who tackle topics that are always well attended and appreciated by young people and adults at the gathering. These topics are around dating and relationships and marriage and understanding God's gift of sex. And we know these topics can be difficult to handle for parents or church workers or other adults. And we appreciate resources that help us engage in conversation and learn from God's word. With us today is Heather Roosh, who is a well-respected life issue speaker and author. She is passionate about youth and about being a voice of God's truth in their lives. Heather is an abstinence educator and certified pregnancy center advocate and has served as executive director of Crisis Pregnancy Centers. She and her husband, Matt, have three children and live in Michigan. Heather, welcome to Engel's podcast. Well, hey, you guys. Great to be here with you. So we got to hear a little bit from your biography that Mark read there, but tell us a little more about your vocations, your writing, and your speaking, um, and other things that bring you joy. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, the number one, the big thing that b- brings me joy is spending time with my family. Um, I'm the mom of three great kids, Bella, Paul, and Sophia. My husband, Matt, um, as as uh, Pastor Kiesling mentioned, is um, a Lutheran pastor. So my family is my heart and my joy. Um, and it's one of the reasons that I do what I do, um, that I'm passionate about writing and creating resources, speaking to youth um, on these hot topic issues, and then also providing, um, uh, you know, through education, giving uh, the church especially resources so that they can talk um, and open up discussions about life issues, the value of human life and sexuality and marriage as well. So, um, yeah, so it's been exciting working, um, you know, in crisis pregnancy centers, working in youth ministry. um, You know, there's just, uh, it it seems like wherever I go in my life, this is what I do. So (laughs) it's exciting. Well, we're thankful for all the work that you do for young people, connecting them with God's word. Like you said, starting those conversations sometimes that can maybe be difficult at times, but having a voice for them to speak and also a listening ear to hear their questions and things. So I'm guessing there's probably some stories that you could tell about your years, junior, senior high ministry. (laughs) And as you reflect back on that, what are either some moments or some people that connected you closer to Jesus or to the church through those years of transition and, and as you were going through high school and junior high years? Yeah, you know what? I think um, definitely one of the things I, I tell youth all the time um, is, you know, it's our experiences. We all have a story to share, mm-hmm. right? It's through our experiences that God brings us, um, shows us his grace and his mercy and his forgiveness and and kind of brings us to the place where we are, um, the calling, the, the great calling on our lives. So, yeah, we all have our stories and our experiences. And I think growing up for me, um, you know, I grew up in the church. I grew up in a Christian home. I had a a really wonderful family. Um, you know, I look back on my childhood and I definitely had, you know, those wonderful youth group experiences. One of the things that always stands out to me though, is just that kind of that, that divide that happens, um, junior high and high school where you, you, you've got your, your life, Mm -hmm. your day to day life. And then you kind of leave your life to go to church Mm -hmm. or to go to youth group or spend time with your Christian friends. Um, and I, I would say that definitely reigns true for me looking back at my childhood. And I'm just so grateful. I remember specifically, um, probably, around eighth grade freshman year of high school I remember going to a youth group event um, and I hadn't been there for a long time and I was feeling a tremendous amount of pressure Mm -hmm. to drink um, to be in relationships um, you know to go out and maybe do some things that I was not feeling good about but I didn't feel like I had a choice Mm -hmm. right because my reputation's on the line all my friends are doing it and and so I remember being conflicted about that and then my cousins invited me to go to a youth group event and um I left it out the door. We played Ghost in the Graveyard. We <laughs> ate chips and, 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 and pizza and drink pop. And we, I mean, it was such a great time just to be together. Mm-hmm. Um, and the pressure was off. Yeah. And I think that's one of the greatest things that we as the church have to offer um, is just a place for our youth to come together where the pressure's off. Yeah. You know, you can be and you can discuss and you can hang um, and just emotionally, mentally, um, just allow yourself to get refreshed with God's word. We did some recent research, and one of the words that kind of came out with that, uh, talking about Christian community, where these supportive adults, 
parents where there's this kind of what we end up using words warmth, challenge, and grace, but it was what we heard from young people, kind of a safe environment, yeah. place where I could be authentic and be able to know where I was loved and cared for. And I, I think so yeah. I kind of had the and, pressure off. Yeah, and yeah. true authenticity. Mm-hmm. I think that is, you know, absolutely, because out in the world, we find our little cliques, especially as adolescents, you know, students, we find our cliques, and that's our authentic self that we present. But really, you know, there's there's always, especially as a, as a, a Christian student, you know, someone who's raised in the church, um, you know, has a, a relationship with God. You know, for me, I always had this inner conflict, you know, and I, I didn't ever feel like I was actually able to present my full self. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I think the, the word authentic, authentic is, mm-hmm. is definitely appropriate. Great. Yeah, so you get a chance to uh, work with young people from across the country in a lot of, of different ways. What is it that you love about working with teenagers in particular? Oh, man. You know what? I see myself in them. They're so fun, right? <laughs> I mean, really, I, I love working with teenagers because they are searching and they're receptive. And they, you know, there is definitely a hunger. Um, you know, I look at, at, at every youth, every teen that I have ever in, been in in. in that I've ever encountered, um, and there's this um, there's this true hunger to have a happy, healthy, safe, mm-hmm. strong, faithful life. They want that dream future. Mm-hmm. They want that stable marriage. They want um, you know true connection, and um, and they want true love. They they want that, and so for me to be able to say um, this is how you this is how you can have it, like God. God wants this for you too. Um, to me, that's the that's the the payoff. That is the greatest thing. The passion that keeps me driving is mm-hmm. to be able to share this message with them that God's way actually, you know, actually benefits you cr- incredibly. Like God gives us His law for sure, um, but He gives us His law because you are His most precious mm-hmm. possession. And how do we take care of the things that are most priceless to us? How much more so does God take care of you, His most precious possession? Um, and so for them to be able to 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 hear that and then put that into context and say, oh, okay, this isn't all about these rules and these laws and, you know, controlling my life and people keeping me from doing the things that I love. No, this is, um, you know, this is God yeah. taking care of you because you are precious to him. Um, and so to be able to share that with youth um, and with, you know, with, with people of all ages, but yeah. especially with youth at a time in history, I mean, this generation is facing stuff that they, yeah. no other generation has ever faced, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, especially dealing with the value of human life, the things that God has placed value on, um, and especially with sexuality. You know, mm-hmm. we, we, can, we distort and confuse um, sex for love so easily in our culture today um and uh and so it really is is a it, it's gratifying um it's it's a, a, a tremendous joy but it's the thing that keeps me motivated to be able to say to them hold on i'm going to tell you the better way now so. awesome i know you got to do a lot of that this last summer at the 2019 lcms youth gathering yeah. in minneapolis you spoke on two sessions one was my body my life my value in christ which was a girls only discussion on life and sexuality you also spoke with pam stencil in a second session titled take a look in the mirror that was on dating and marriage um depending on when you listening are, are listening to this podcast those sessions will fully be available as a podcast as well to listen to those in their entirety but I want you to tell us a little bit about that experience and perhaps the interactions questions feedback maybe you receive from both youth and adults on those topics that yeah. you spoke on this was a powerful youth gathering in so many ways for me as a speaker both of my sessions i mean our girls only session that was really um a parallel to the my body my choice mm. um you know a stereotype, but, but argument in our culture today, you know, my session was my body, my life, my value in Christ. And it was just kind of saying, let's step back. What are we really saying when we say my body, my choice? That sounds really good at first, right? Um, it, it's my body. It should be my choice. Um, whatever I'm deciding sounds really good at first, but to be able to step back and say, what are we really saying? What are we really talking about? And so that's where the title of that session came up for our girls only session, my body, my life, my value in Christ is really what's at the heart of every of everything. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I believe fundamentally that the value of every human life is at the core mm-hmm. um, of every other single issue on the table. 
really. And so in this session, it was really powerful hearing the feedback and, and getting the feedback from the girls. I mean, we turned away several hundred yeah. girls yeah. from <laughs> every single session every time. It was it was devastating, but it was powerful at the same time because we had so many young women who were wanting to come and they wanted to talk about abortion. Yeah. They wanted to talk about the value of human life. They wanted to talk about unplanned pregnancy. They wanted information about contraceptives. They wanted someone, you know, to, to get the, I truly believe, you know, for them all to be there together was incredibly powerful because of that community they were they were just affirmed that the, they're not the only ones who are wondering about this stuff they wanted it from a biblical perspective what does god have to say about life issues um and so that was powerful um we had a lot of girls who came up um and reached out to us afterwards um, about unplanned pregnancy mm -hmm. um friends or mm -hmm. they, they themselves mm -hmm. who had experienced abortions mm -hmm. um and I think that's something that as the church we really have to recognize is that we as Christians are not exempt from these things. Mm -hmm. um, you know, 99.9% .9 of the girls that I have come alongside who have had an abortion in their past um, did so thinking they had absolutely no other option. Mm -hmm. And they did it alone. And they didn't, mm -hmm. um, you know, they're suffering silently with mm -hmm. this. And it's still happening today. Um, and so for us to be able to, to provide a session like that and then uh, have some follow-up and be able to say, I'm a person that you can come and talk to, um, was really powerful and um, encouraging for me. So we're, we're praying for those girls, put them in touch with some great resources um, after the gathering. Um, and then, you know, in Pam Stencil's uh, session, our session that we did together, which was Take a Look in the Mirror, we had the opportunity to invite the guys into the conversation <laughs> a little bit, which was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, and, you know, the, the the gist of that session, you know, was was – who are you looking for? What are the characteristics that you're looking for in your future mate? Now, why would they want you, mm -hmm. right? Because you attract who you are. And so for us to be able to fundamentally first look at our value to our creator, who we are in Christ, um, you know, that again, that value that we have um, and what our place is in the world, our relationship with Christ first, and then allowing everything else to filter through that um, it was really powerful. And afterwards, we had a lot of students. It was kind of a lighter session. It was a lot more fun. But we did talk about sexuality. But we had a lot of students hang around afterwards and just share with us. Like, no one's ever said that to me before. Yeah. And when you say that that to them, like, now why would they want you? They all kind of go, oh, you know, <laughs> the burn. Yeah, why would they want me? I never really thought about that before. So to get to see them intentionally thinking about, OK, I, I probably haven't put as much time and effort and thought into this as I should. Um, and that was really, that was really incredible. That's great. So since the gathering and around the gathering, you matter tour. Yeah. So your tour that you are on speaking across the country, yeah. uh, different audiences. We were kind of talking about this a little bit before I started doing the podcast. So want to hear more about your talking in terms of like maybe some of the different contexts that you go into and speak, including even public high schools mm -hmm. um, and we're talking with parents and maybe other adult leaders who are doing youth ministry, pastors, DCEs, others, teachers who are working with young people and know these topics come up. Um, and so maybe some uh, conversations and maybe connections that you do with adults as well. I want you to reflect a little bit on kind of the top questions maybe you get, uh, yeah. the conversations you know that are taking place. I think I think it really does fit on, you're going back to your youth years, <clears throat> about how do we create those safe environments for them to be able to come and have a good conversation yeah. about this. Because I think it happens at youth gatherings too. It's like oh, they yeah. feel like kind of, oh, I'm in a good place where I can ask these questions where there is a source. And sometimes I think it's a little bit of like, oh, I want to check the answers and I'm hearing back at my home congregation with another person and see if they match up. And then they do. And it's yeah. like, oh, this is powerful stuff. So maybe speak a little bit on what you've seen as you've gone out now and toured in other parts of the country, different contexts, mm -hmm. and maybe the connection between adults and youth and the questions and answers that are being provided. Yeah. And you know what? If, I, I'm, thank you for asking about it. So the You Matter Tour um, came, uh, started about a year ago. We started conceptualizing and putting this together. And the reason was because um, it came to our attention that uh, the, the suicide rates mm -hmm. between mm -hmm. 15 and 24 year olds mm -hmm. in the United States are at the highest levels that they've ever been in all time. Mm -hmm. And so that's to yeah. And then you look at, um, you know, the Center for Disease Control has just announced that we are in the midst of a, sex, a sexually transmitted infection epidemic mm -hmm. in our country. Mm -hmm. um, and so we know that now after all of these years of comprehensive sex ed in the school systems, number one, I think f we can all agree nobody's talking about this, mm -hmm. right? And if they are talking about it, we're, we're kind of giving each other, passing around mm -hmm. these stereotypes about condoms and birth control. And, and it's not working. 
it's not working because at the end of the day, you've got a physical body that also is not just a physical body, but a body that thinks and feels and is in relationship with other people and is in relationship with God. So, you know, when we're talking about the You Matter tour, the fundamental, um, you know, primary focus of that tour is God's value of every human life, your value. You matter. You matter because Christ made it that way, mm -hmm. right? Um, you are God's most priceless possession, but you are not just a physical body. You know, you're physical, social, emotional, mental, and spiritual. And so to be able to look at your whole body um, and then be able to recognize, you know, that, um, you know, that, that, that impacts the way that you approach everything else. When you know your value in Christ, it impacts the way you see yourself, it impacts the way you see others around you, and then it ultimately impacts the way that you um, see and approach God himself. And so um, in the, the idea behind the You Matter Tour is to open up opportunities for, be a third party that comes in to churches and schools, um, communities, and says, hey, we're a third party coming in and giving you the opportunity to open up this mm -hmm. discussion because we know you want to talk about it. We know parents and pastors and youth leaders, you want to talk about this with your kids. Kids, we know that you want to talk about mm -hmm. this. Um, so here, sometimes just finding a jumping off point, you know, is hard. So mm -hmm. here, let, let us come in and open up the discussion for you. So um, last week, yeah, we did our first, we're a faith-based program. 99% of the mm -hmm. time. Um, but last week we were invited to go into public schools. Wow. Uh, we did a seventh and eighth grade program, then a ninth through 12th grade program. Um, yeah, it was an incredible experience. We've, we've been, the, the first week of the tour was October. Um, so we've had a lot of speaking events since then, um, had a lot of great interactions. Uh, and last week, going into the public school system was really eye-opening um, and was just another kind of dimension of the mm -hmm. You Matter Tour, mm -hmm. recognizing that, um, you know, these kids are hurting mm -hmm. so much. So one of the things that that we do is we allow the kids to ask anonymous questions. Um, and then in the evening, um, we try to get the parents together for what we call a, a roundtable discussion on life issues and sexuality. Um, we invite them usually to a, a local church and give them the opportunity to also ask anonymous questions. Where the pressure's off, we can open them up, answer them together. And as a community of people, I mean, we have a relational God mm -hmm. who's created us to be relational people so for us to you know takes a lot of this you know heavy relationship stuff this this value of our lives um, and the way that we we see our our significance you know for us to take and be handling all of these things on our own it's just it goes against God's mm -hmm. design mm -hmm. so the idea is that we would be able to come together and that through the you matter tour events the roundtable discussion you're connecting with other parents other leaders in your community and you're saying we're all in this together. Um, and then for the youth, you know, the same thing applies for the youth, and we definitely talk to them about that as well. Um, but I think, you know, it, it's it's amazing to see the, the distinguishment between um, – the parents and the kids, mm. the conversations and the things that the kids are asking are completely different than the conversations and, you know, the, the questions that the parents are asking. And I think that's a big part of this entire conversation mm -hmm. is being able to recognize um, we are not all on the same page on this. And, and what a blessing it is when we realize that. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> embrace right. that. Right? Point, right? Like, let's yep. not run away from mm -hmm. that. Let's mm -hmm. embrace the fact that we now we, we see a definite void where we, we need to get together. And yeah. we can say, okay, the parents are concerned about how to relate with their kids, how to get closer to them, how to know if their kids are sexually active, how to, you know, what is appropriate dress for my children. Um, and then the kids are asking questions like, um, does God hate me because I'm gay? Hmm. Um, you know, is plan B really an abortion? Mm -hmm. um, can you talk to me about hormonal birth control? Um, can you talk to me about all birth control? Um, my best friend had an abortion and she's, she's hurting, she's suffering, what do I do? Um, you know, there, my, my, my friend is transgender, how can I help them? Um, I am suicidal, I have, you know, I cut myself. Um, and so f we hear this and it's, and it's, and it's heavy, it's heavy stuff. They are being attacked. Um, and, and so for us to give this opportunity, I think so often what they're just, they're just dealing with this stuff on their own. Yeah. And, but now we've given them the opportunity to talk about it, to open it up. And so I do think, you know, especially as youth leaders, um, 
you know, and parents, you know, every day, I feel this way with my kids too. It's beneficial to to know that your your community is there for you. So utilize those resources. And very often it does take having a national youth gathering, mm-hmm. you know, a youth group, uh, you know, camp retreat, mm-hmm. the You Matter tour, you know, something like that, a third party to come in and say, okay, let's open up the, the conversation. Let's talk about this stuff because they're they're definitely dealing with it. Absolutely. And yeah. you, you provided for the e-source resource something that can engage in that yeah. conversation uh, titled uh, sexual mentality that looks at creating a bib, uh, uh, excuse me creating a culture of biblical integrity five starts uh, five part study one uh, maybe as you touch on those things that you uh, see the, on the tour and now um, I'm an adult leader uh, I'm gonna look at this study um, and say but I don't have Heather Roosh coming to my <laughs> right. church to help well, we me with this conversation. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> so, like, that's all, yeah. so one, yeah. call up Heather, get her connected as often yeah. as you can. Uh, but you're in this yeah. situation where you're going to do this study, um, and you're getting these questions that you just listed. And I'm like, I don't want those questions to come up. <laughs> or, or where do I where do I, I point people? Yeah. What suggestions would you get? Some are, I know are in the study, right. um, and maybe point bring those out. But also, where would you go to some, maybe some resources, or how would you handle that when those tough conversations come up, or you've got. Maybe parents and kids are obviously missing each other um, with their questions and answers. Any suggestions that you would give as they dive into this study? Well, and, and I think that's a really good question. So to, kind of two parts to that. The first one is that the reason I'm writing all these resources mm-hmm. through CPH, through LCMS mm-hmm. Youth Ministry, um, and, the, and the, the gathering um, is because there are not a lot of resources yeah. out there. And so, you know, as I said before, growing up the way that I did um, and, and kind of recognizing, you know, I faced an unplanned pregnancy as a, a 19-year-old in college um, and found myself contemplating abortion. So, you know, and then I hid that. I I I did choose to to parent my my daughter, um, but I hid that and was so ashamed of that for so many years. Um, And and then to see how God, you know, brought me out of that shell and said, hey, you have a story. You have an experience. You have a message. You have a contribution. Um, And this is a place where now you can come alongside somebody else who's facing these things. And so, you know, my my number one thing is don't be afraid to share your story. Mm -hmm. We have stories Mm -hmm. to share Mm -hmm. for Mm -hmm. a reason. God brings us through the painful things in our lives, you know, in order that we might come alongside one another, right? So when you you share your story, it, it is often the most powerful testimony, even if it does doesn't relate directly to the person in front of you, it does <laughs> yeah. make you human to yeah. them, yeah. right? I mean, that's powerful. And then I think, you know, so 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 a lot of the resources that I'm creating, the Bible study on eSource, um, but then also my book, Sexuality mm-hmm. Mentality, you. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, we do have a couple of other uh, resources, little pamphlets, um, top 10 reasons to talk to your kids about sex now that we put out through CPH. It's just a little pamphlet. Um, and then we also have one called Fearfully and Wonderfully Made. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just a little devotion that that parents can go through with their kids, youth leaders can go through with their kids that establishes, that opens the conversation, says every single human life has value. This is what God says about you and about your life. And then it, you know, it's just, you read through Psalm 139 together with a few, you know, interactions that make it very practical to your life. Um, and it, it's a jumping off point. So from there, you know, I think those resources are definitely great. Um, but I, but I also want to, you know, come back to, um, over and over again, this is the thing that is, is drastic about the You Matter Tour and about the message that I think um, I'm giving as opposed to that uh, that we've been hearing in our culture about purity. Mm -hmm. You know, in our culture for so many, for so long, we've been hearing that our purity is something we have to give God, right? You have to be this. You have to save yourself for this. Um, And the reality is it has failed because Mm -hmm. why? We're sinners, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) right? We fail. We are sinful people living in a a fallen world. Mm -hmm. Um, However, You know, the beautiful thing that we especially as Lutherans have to offer, you know, is the divine service, the good gifts of God that he gives us. And so the thing that these kids and and parents, too, are just globbing onto are the things that we have had Mm -hmm. as a part of our worship, you know, for, I mean, all time. Right. And that is the divine service where we go to church and God serves us. He gives us everything that we need in order to get through this life. So when I'm out there and I'm talking, and especially to parents and youth leaders who want to know how to create this culture around their kids, because that is what it's going to take, creating a subculture around our children so that they can discern the lies of the culture. No matter what is thrown at them, they know the truth and they can recognize it for a lie. Um, 
Uh, and so, you know, in order to do that, you've got to get your kids in church. You got to give them Jesus mm-hmm. over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. You give them Jesus in their baptism when he writes his name on you. Um, I use this analogy all the time, but it's so powerful. When I was a kid, I would go school shopping and I'd get all my school supplies. And the first thing I do when I got home is I'd write my name on every single thing. Why did I do that? <laughs> Because I didn't want anybody stealing my stuff. And God does that to us in our baptism. He joins us with with Christ, and he says, you are mine. Um, he writes his name on us. He doesn't want anybody stealing his most precious possession. So in your baptism, in the forgiveness of our sins, um, recognizing that we are sinners. Parents, tell your children they are sinners, um, as we all are. Share your stories so that mm-hmm. they see, you know, you're human and that we are all in this together. Um, and then, you know, in, in Holy Communion. I mean, the divine service of of Christ's body and blood that I would say is like Superman. It like pumps his blood, (laughs) pumps through my blood. His body is, you know, pumps through my body and it strengthens me and restores me. Right. And it sets me anew so I can go out in the world and I'm ready. I'm strong again and I'm forgiven and I'm healed. And I know that tangibly I have Christ in me. Right. Um, And then, you know, we we get to the end of the service or to the preaching of the of the word. Um, you know, where we hear the word given to us. I, you know, when I'm talking to youth out there, I'm like, you're looking for your, you know, the purpose of your life, where to go, how to guide, you know, what guide, you know, what direction you should, you should go, man, the word, listen to the word. It's powerful. It it does stuff. Mm -hmm. It guides your life, you know, and then at the very end where we are blessed with the peace of the Lord in that community, Right. In church, in that community of people who God has given us as lifelines. If you want to change the culture around your kids, give them Jesus over and over and over again. You know, what comes from that? Fruit. Mm -hmm. Fruit comes from receiving Jesus over and over and over again. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. Those are the things that we need, that we want, right, that we cannot we cannot produce ourselves. Mm So instead of trying to be that, you know, in all the ways that the world would, would have us seek it out, right? Instead of trying to be all those things, receive Christ and let him be all those things in you and through you, you know? Great. Yeah. Yeah, we do talk about wanting to develop both a, a deep understanding of their baptismal faith and, and yeah. resilient identity in Christ as being these key pieces. And, and these topics are so critical for that because we know uh, so many people in this generation are struggling with uh, gender and with sexuality and with and, with, and identity. Mm-hmm. And I think you, you point to it. it goes right back to that core of identity and who we are and whose we are. Um, and, and lots of other things flow out of that. Uh, what do you hope young people will walk away with when they do this study that the value of every human life is the most important issue on the table Hmm. it is whether or not when you recognize your value the value of your own life it's at that point that you can look at everybody else around you and you can see that same unchanging not subjective value in every other person and that means that i can sit across the table from you and i don't have to agree with you and i don't have to like you and i can be different from you but at the end of the day, I can still see that same value and I can treat you with the respect um, you know, that you deserve because I, I know my own value and I know the respect that I deserve because of, of you know, the value that God has placed on my life, right? So yes, and, and when we understand that, everything else falls into place. I mean, you look at that as the, I always, I always tell kids, it's the blue dot. Where's your blue dot? The thing that you're most focused on, right? That will, um, you know, everything in your life will radiate out from that or constantly and constantly come back to it. So if that blue dot is Christ, your value in Christ, every emotion, every thought, every relationship, you know, physical, social, emotional, um, mental, always falls back into its proper place. But when that dot is anything other than your value in Christ, it it distorts mm-hmm. and it changes, um, twists the way that you see yourself and the way that you see everybody else and their value in this world. So where's your blue dot? Yeah. Great. 
you've given a lot of good information for people leading this study or engaging those yeah. conversations. Any final encouragement that you would give to pastors, commission ministers, or lay leaders who are leading uh, the study that you wrote with young people? Yeah, you know, the, the, the tremendous encouragement I have is I'm so grateful that you're doing this study, that you've taken the initiative to open up this discussion. It is the most important <laughs> issue, guys. I mean, it is the, this is what we gotta be talking about with our kids. It really does, um, I mean, the entire culture is surrounding them um, with with sex and yeah. and the, finding their significance in sex. We say it all the time. Sex sells. This we know. It taps into the addictive parts of the brain. And for the better part of ninety years, we have been you know consumerism and marketing has been surrounding us often subliminally yeah. with um, you know this propaganda that that draws our attention, makes the blue dot in our lives, um, draws our attention to the physical body um, and to our sexuality as the place where we find our value. Um, and so, you know, that changes relationship. And when relationship, you know, the way God intended it, even just between friends, between parent and child, between pastor and student, um, you know, when, when, when relationship is distorted, then it's even more difficult to see our relationship with God, right? So I commend you for doing this study, number one, because it is vitally important. Um, but I also want to encourage you at the same time, meet these kids where they are. Yeah. I mean, they truly believe um, and they truly feel and they truly think that everything, I mean, it's real to them where they yeah. are right now. So yeah. meet them where they're at and show show them grace and seek to come alongside them and build deep strong connections because that is what they're looking for they're looking for a deep strong for someone um uh, you know and and something that that can uh fulfill them and and that points them to their identity to their purpose and allows them to truly experience true love um in a culture that is is constantly giving superficial love um we can the church can give the love of christ the deep deep love of christ so Great. Well, thank you for writing this resource. And certainly, I know it'll foster learning conversations around this topic of God's design for sex, the beauty of Christ centered relationships, and as you've so well said, God's forgiveness in Jesus Christ that we receive. Uh, and certainly a blessing for all of us to be refreshed in that knowledge as we do need to be daily reminded of that, of how much we are deeply loved in Christ and can rest in our baptism and God's promises uh, that He's always with us and loves us. Just thank you so much for taking the time on your tour to come and be in studio with us. And certainly, God's blessings on all the continued speaking and connection you do with young people across our country. So grateful for you and uh, just all the work that you do uh, for young people. Thank you. It's really wonderful to be here with you guys and I appreciate the opportunity to write the Bible study. So thank you. The Heather's sessions and study hits on a number of the practices of healthy youth ministry we discuss. Uh, one is helping young people deeply understand their baptismal faith and a key part of that is how parents and the church live out and discuss healthy relationships, showing examples of uh, confession and absolution, absolution, grace and forgiveness, uh, striving to put interests of others before our own. Those are just a key way to show Christ's love for us. I, one of the things that we saw we, we talk about in these practices is, again, congregations that told stories of failure, of forgiveness, of success, um, and how Christ was at the center of that. Um, and that can really be a beautiful thing for a young person. And certainly, too, talking about dating and marriage and these types of things, too, is always a way to introduce and discuss vocation and many roles that God has given to us in life. Really, the topics that she talked about um, is not just about sexuality, but right. it's uh, so much about identity, so much about who we are. And, and that impacts so many different parts of youth ministry and how we talk about identity, um, how we talk about issues of, of worth and of value. Mm -hmm. and, and we can't underestimate the, the kinds of questions young people are really asking. I think one of the, our biggest downfalls in youth ministry is thinking all they really want are, are Doritos and, and Mountain Dew um, and, a, and a place to play dodgeball uh, when, you know, certainly she's an example of, of how people or how young people are really digging in deep uh, with issues either themselves or with their friends. Well, I was going to say, yeah, because I think in so many cases they want to be that shining light for their friends too. Mm -hmm. They they may not, I mean, they just, they're just they bringing those burdens of their friends too and to say like either I want this to be a place where my friends can come or I want to be able to be Christ to them as they're walking with these burdens um, and how can I help them carry and point them to Christ in that. So again, the way we can encourage our young people and their vocation as friend and as student uh, to shine the light of Christ for their friends too. 
as Barna looked at Gen Z, you know, some of the data, some of the most surprising data we saw come out of that was this idea that uh, one uh, in about 10 every 10 young people is identifying as something other than than heterosexual mm -hmm. um or is identifying themselves as a different uh, oh. non-binary there you go. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's really uh, a situation where uh, they are are trying to think through a lot more mm -hmm. issues than just right. am I having sex before marriage? <laughs> right. <laughs> am I? It's not. Uh, you know, in many ways we have have limited it down to this one singular topic, and really there's a whole lot of different nuance going on in that conversation. I think we see a little bit in the longitudinal data with our LYF piece that we do at the youth gathering is that we've seen actually things like dating relationships go down in terms of when they list my the greatest concerns in my life the dating relationships maybe gone down but now they're wrestling with all these other issues around identity sexual identity helping my friends walk through this um, whatever it may be that's different than maybe it was say well, those weren't even on the list 15 years ago maybe now those have increased in number and maybe the dating change so there might be some nuances when we think about that but yet when we can talk about identity and who we are in christ while we receive in our baptism uh, what comes around is in church in our Christian community is still such a foundational piece for young people as they grapple with that in their world they live in. And the same uh, data points that we would see uh, that say young people might be differing the first time they're having sex until later on in life mm -hmm. uh, doesn't necessarily mean that sexuality isn't going to be an issue, that sex isn't going to be a conversation that they need to have. And, and certainly the congregation and, and the church needs to be a place, a safe place for them to start to have that conversation, for them to think about how they can uh, develop a resilient identity in Christ um, and, and fight kind of the world, the way that the world sort of discord, distorts sex and gender and, and so many other ways um, and helping them to understand uh, that foundation first and foremost in Christ and their identity in Christ so that uh, when they get hit with so many of those other pieces that they have a way to bounce back and know where to get that uh, that forgiveness is, as she talked about having uh, getting Jesus over and over mm -hmm. and over again uh, in, in our divine worship and in, in scripture and in, in the community. So uh, certainly we got the study that we're lifting up that Heather wrote that's on the e-source five-part study uh, that goes through different uh, topics of around uh, what we see in our culture, uh, who we know as ourselves in Christ, and then uh, really how we stand pat to his truth and his love in us. One, uh, I know she probably was lifting up a lot of issues that um, I know even for me, I was thinking, boy, boy, in you know, my day in, day out, how would I answer some of those questions? And I want to point to some other great resources that are available. Uh, I'm going to go over to our friends at Concordia Publishing House for a couple of those. One, they just have great stuff if you just generally Google for their sexual education pieces that might relate to confirmation age or just out throughout all ages uh, that for conversation starters between parents and the congregation. And the two books going to lift up again is Heather's book, Sexual Mentality, Creating a Culture of Biblical Integrity. So um, she's telling us that some of those questions that might be raised by your young people, there's answers in that book in terms of where we point them or the answers we give them. Another one I bring up too is uh, Sexual Morality in a Christless World. This was by Reverend Matthew Rieger. Um, the thing I found helpful about that book, reading it, is, I mean, premise that he takes is basically like any of these questions we're getting as Christians or as the church about sexual identity or sexual ethics, the church has answered. And they've had to been faced with this before, whether it was immediately in first century Christianity or through the history of the church. So it was a good reassuring thing to say, hey, this isn't something new. The church is not old fashioned in the sense that we've always had these answers and we've always had the truth to speak to our culture and to point them to Christ. So some helpful resources to use out there as you're starting to build kind of that repertoire in this discussion in your home congregation. So a couple of uh, questions, ways to think about how this might apply to your youth ministry. Uh, think about how young people in your congregation are grappling with issues around dating, sex, gender, sexuality, uh, and preparing for marriage in their future. Does your church actively engage young people in those conversations? And how particularly are parents going to be equipped for those conversations? Another question is, what pressures do your young people face around these issues of dating, sex, and marriage? Have you seen young people confess truth in difficult situations in order to shine Christ's light for the benefit of their friends? And also, are your young people being tapped as a resource for inspiration, energy, and insight into the current culture around views of relationships and sex, and that we can listen well to their questions and insights that they have? We continue to lift you up in prayer as you deal with so many of these difficult issues, challenging issues that your young people are wrestling through. And we pray that God gives you insight and discernment uh, and energy to go out and, uh, and to walk with them and to talk with them as they go through some of these issues.
And Gold Podcast is a production of LCMS Youth Ministry and KFUO Radio. To find out more about LCMS Youth Ministry or to find links to resources mentioned, go to kfuo.org slash youth ministry. Thank you for listening and caring for the young people of our church. Thank you.